A Father of Women by Alice Maynell Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis Ad Sororum E.B. Thy father was transfused into thy blood. Dryden, O to Mrs. Anne Killigrew. Our father works in us, the daughters of his manhood. Not undone is he, not wasted, though transmuted thus, and though he left no son. Therefore on him I cry to arm me, for my delicate mind a cask, a breastplate for my heart courage to die of thee captain i ask nor strengthen only press a finger on this violent blood and pale over this rash will let thy tenderness a while pause and prevail and shepherd father thou whose staff folded my thoughts before my birth control them now i am of earth and now thou art no more of earth. O oh, liberal, constant, dear, crush in my nature the ungenerous art of the inferior. Set me high, and here, here, garner up thy heart. Like to him now are they, the million living fathers of the war, mourning the crippled world, the bitter day whose striplings are no more. The crippled world! Come then, fathers of women, with your honor and trust. Approve, accept, know them daughters of men, now that your sons are dust. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Length of Days to the Early Dead in Battle by Alice Mayno, read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. There is no length of days but yours, boys who were children once. Of old the past beset you in your childish ways, with sense of time untold. What have you then foregone? A history? This you had. Or memories? These too you had of your far distant dawn no further dawn seems his the old man who shares with you but has no more no more time's mystery did once for him the most that it can do he has had infancy in all his dreams and all his loves for mighty nature sweet and few are but the dwindling past he can recall of what his childhood knew he counts not any more his brief, his present years. But, oh, he knows how far apart the summers were of yore, how far apart the snows. Therefore be satisfied. Long life is in your treasury ere you fall. Yes, and first love like Dante's, O oh, a bride forever mystical. Irrevocable good, you dead, and now about so young to die your childhood was their space their multitude their dwelt antiquity end of poem this recording is in the public domain nurse edith cavell by alice maynell read for librivox dot org by sonia nurse edith cavell two o'clock the morning of october twelfth nineteen fifteen to her accustomed eyes the midnight morning brought not such a dread as thrills the chance awakened head that lies in trivial sleep on the habitual bed twas yet some hours ere light and many 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 a break of day had she outwatched the dying but this night shortened her vigil was briefer the way by dial of the clock, twas day in the dark above her lonely head. This day thou shalt be with me, ere the cock announce that day she met the immortal dead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
summer in england 1914 by alice maynell read for LibriVox.org by sonia summer in england 1914 on london fell a clearer light caressing pencils of the sun defined the distances the white houses transfigured one by one the long unlovely street impearled oh what a sky has walked the world most happy year and out of town the hay was prosperous and the wheat the silken harvest climbed the down moon after moon was heavenly sweet stroking the bread within the sheaves looking twixt apples and their leaves and while this rose made round her cup the armies died convulsed and when this chaste young silver sun went up softly a thousand shattered men one wet corruption heaped the plain after a league-long throb of pain flower following tender flower and birds and berries and benignant skies made thrive the serried flocks and herds yonder are men shot through the eyes love hide thy face from man's unpardonable race who said no man hath greater love than this to die to serve his friend so these have loved us all unto the end chide thou no more o thou unsacrificed the soldier dying dies upon a kiss the very kiss of christ end of poem this recording is in the public domain to tintoretto in venice by alice Maynell. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. To Tintoretto in Venice. The art of painting had in the primitive years looked with the light, not towards it. Before Tintoretto's date, however, many painters practised shadows and lights, and turned more or less sunwards. But he set the figure between himself and the full sun. His work is to be known in Venice by the splendid trick of an occluded sun and a shadow thrown straight at the spectator tintoretto's thronged procession to calvary and his crucifixion incidentally named are two of the greatest of his multitude of works in venice master thy enterprise magnificent magnanimous was well done which seized the head of art and turned her eyes the simpleton and made her front the sun long had she sat content her young unlessened back to a morning gay to a solemn noon to a cloudy firmament and looked upon a world in gentle day but thy imperial call bade her to stand with thee and breast the light and therefore face the shadows mystical sombre translucent vestiges of night yet glories of the day eagle we know thee by thy undaunted eyes skyward and by thy glooms we blow thy way ambiguous and those halo misted dyes thou cloud the bridegroom's friend the bridegroom's son master we know thy sign a mystery of use world without end and hide and seek of gamesome and divine shade of the noble head cast hitherward upon the noble breast human solemnities thrice hallowed the haste to calvary the cross at rest look sunward angel then carry the fortress heavens by that hand still be the interpreter of suns to men and shadow us o thou tower for thou shalt stand end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Thrush Before Dawn by Alice Maynell Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia A Thrush Before Dawn A voice peals in this end of night, A phrase of notes resembling stars, Single and spiritual notes of light. What call they at my window bars? The south, the past, the day to be, An ancient infelicity. Darkling, deliberate, what sings this wonderful one alone at peace what wilder things than song 
what things sweeter than youth clearer than greece dearer than italy untold delight and freshness centuries old and first first loves a multitude the exultation of their pain ancestral childhood long renewed and midnights of invisible rain and gardens gardens night and day gardens and childhood all the way what middle ages passionate o oh, passionless voice what distant bells lodged in the hills what palace state illyrian for it speaks it tells without desire without dismay some morrow and some yesterday all natural things but more whence came this yet remoter mystery how do these starry notes proclaim a graver still divinity this hope this sanctity of fear o innocent throat o human ear end of poem this recording is in the public domain the two shakespeare tercentenaries by alice maynell read for LibriVox.org by jason in panama the two shakespeare tercentenaries of birth 1864 of death 1916 to shakespeare longer than thine than thine is now my time of life and thus thy years seem to be clasped and harbored within mine oh how ignoble this my clasp appears thy unprophetic birth thy darkling death living i might have seen that cradle marked those labors closed that earth o oh, first o oh, last o oh, infinite between now that my life has shared thy dedicated date o oh, mortal twice to what all vain embrace shall be compared my lean enclosure of thy paradise to ignorant arms that fold a poet to a foolish breast the line that is not with the world within its hold so days with days my days encompass thine child stripling man the sod might i talk little language to thee poor on thy last sentence o thou city of god my waste lies after thee and lies before End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To O of Her Dark Eyes by Alice Maynell. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. To O of Her Dark Eyes. Across what calm of tropic seas, neath alien clusters of the nights, looked in the past such eyes as these long quenched relumed ancestral lights the generations fostered them and steadfast nature secret wise thou seedling child of that old stem kindled anew thy dark bright eyes was it a century or two this lovely darkness rose and set occluded by gray eyes and blue and nature feigning to forget some grandam gave a hint of it so cherished was it in thy race so fine a treasure to transmit in its perfection to thy face some father to some mother's breast entrusted it unknowing time implied or made it manifest bequest of a forgotten clime hereditary eyes but this is single singular apart new made thy love new made thy kiss new made thy errand to my heart end of poem this recording is in the public domain the treasure by alice Maino, read for librivox dot org by nemo three times have i beheld fear leap in a babe's face and take his breath fear like the fear of eld that knows the price of life the name of death what is it justifies this thing this dread this fright that has no tongue the terror in those eyes when only eyes can speak 
they are so young not yet those eyes had wept what does fear cherish that it locks so well what fortress is thus kept of what is ignorant terror sentinel and pain in the poor child monstrously disproportionate and dumb and the poor beast and wild and the old decorous man caught overcome of what the outposts these of what the fighting guardians what demands that sense of menaces and then such flying feet imploring hands life there's naught else to seek life only little prize but by design of nature prized how weak how sad how brief oh how divine divine end a poem this recording is in the public domain. A Wind of Clear Weather in England by Alice Maynell Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia A Wind of Clear Weather in England Oh, what a miracle wind is this Has crossed the English land today With an unprecedented kiss And wonderfully found a way unsmirched incredibly and clean between the towns and factories avoiding has his long flight been bringing a sky like sicily's o oh, fine escape horizon pure as rome's black chimneys left and right but not for him the straight the sure his luminous day his spacious night how keen his choice how swift his feet narrow the way and hard to find this delicate stepper and discreet walked not like any worldly wind most like a man in man's own day one of the few a perfect one his open earth the single way his narrow road the open sun end of poem this recording is in the public domain In Sleep by Alice Maino, read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. I dreamt, no dream awake, a dream indeed. A wrathful man was talking in the park. Where are the higher powers who know our need and leave us in the dark? There are no higher powers, there is no heart, in God no love his oratory here taking the paupers and the cripples part was broken by a tear and then it seemed that one who did create compassion who alone invented pity walked as though called in at that northeast gate out from the muttering city threaded the little crowd trod the brown grass bent o'er the speaker close saw the tear rise and saw himself as one looks in a glass in those impassioned eyes end of poem this recording is in the public domain the divine privilege by alice maynell read for librivox dot org by sonia the divine privilege lord where are thy prerogatives why men have more than thou hast kept the king rewards remits forgives the poet to a throne has stepped and thou despoiled hast given away worship to man success to strife thy glory to the heavenly day and made thy son the lord of life is one too precious to impart one property reserved to christ one cherished grappled to that heart to be alone the sacrificed o thou who lovest to redeem one whom i know lies sore oppressed thou wilt not suffer me to dream that i can bargain for her rest seven hours i swiftly sleep while she measures the leagues of dark awake oh that my dewy eyes might be parched by a vigil for her sake but oh rejected oh in vain 
I cannot give who would not keep, I cannot buy, I cannot gain, I cannot give her half my sleep. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Free Will by Alice Maynell Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis Dear are some hidden things my soul has sealed in silence, past delights, hope unconfessed, desires with hampered wings, remembered in the nights. But my best treasures are ennoble, undelightful, abject, cold. Yet, oh, profounder hoards oracular no reliquaries hold. There lie my trespasses, abjured, but not disowned. I'll not accuse determinism, nor, as the master says, charge even the poor deuce. Under my hand they lie, my very own, my proved iniquities, and though the glory of my life go by, I hold and garner these. How else, how otherwhere, how otherwise shall I discern and grope for lowliness? How hate, how love, how dare, how weep, how hope. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Two Questions by Alice Maynell. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Two Questions. A riddling world, one cried. If pangs must be, would God that they were sent to the impure, the cruel, and passed aside the holy innocent. But I, ah, no, 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 not the clean heart transpierced, not tears that fall for a child's agony, not a martyr's woe, not these, not these appall. Not docile motherhood, dutiful, frequent, closed in all distress, not shedding of the unoffending blood, not little joy grown less. Not all benign old age, with dotage mocked, not gallantry that faints and still pursues, not the vile heritage of sin's disease in saints. Not these defeat the mind, for great is that objection, and august that irony. Submissive we shall find a splendour in that dust. Not these puzzle the will, not these the yet unanswered question urge, but the unjust stricken, but the hands that kill lopped, but the merited scourge. The sensualist at fast, the merciless felt, the liar in his snares, the cowardice of my judgment sees, aghast, the flail, the chaff, the tears. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Lord's Prayer by Alice Maynell Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Odimus Disire, Pater Noster Canon of the Mass There is a bolder way, There is a wilder enterprise Than this all-human iteration day by day. Courage, mankind! Restore him what he is. Out of his mouth were given these phrases. O oh, replace them whence they came. He only knows our inconceivable heaven, our hidden father, and the unspoken name. Our trespasses, our bread, the will inexorable yet implored, the miracle words that are and are not said, charged with the unknown purpose of their Lord. Forgive, give, lead us not. Speak them by him, O man the unaware. Speak by that dear tongue, though thou know not what, shuddering through the paradox of prayer. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Easter Night by Alice Maynell Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. 
all night had shout of men and cry of woeful women filled his way until that noon of sombre sky on friday clamour and display smote him no solitude had he no silence since gethsemane public was death but power but might but life again but victory were hushed within the dead of night the shattered dark the secrecy and all alone 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 he rose again behind the stone in the poem this recording is in the public domain end of a father of women and other poems by alice maynell